Paxton raised his binoculars and peered into the darkness of the English Channel. His boots dug into the scrappy turf close to the edge of the cliff. The wind flung handfuls of sleet at his face. Far below, huge waves churned the shingle of the beach. It was a rough night for a crossing. He could pick out a few vessels at sea. Two small fishing boats bumped along close to the shore. A massive container ship, festooned with lights like a leftover Christmas tree, anchored up inside the Goodwin Sands to ride out the storm. A boy, flashing red, warned of the hidden sandbanks beneath. A haze of sickly orange hung over the horizon. The lights of Calais reflected off the lowering clouds. The bastard weather. He couldn't afford for it to be late. At the bottom of the cliff blazed the port of Dover, gantries and docks floodlit. Lorries lined up in the big car park, snaking around the site. Men in high-vis jackets with clipboards stood stoic in the filthy sleet. It was all fixed, he'd been told, so long as they arrived before the shift change at nine. And then he could see it, emerging from the sheets of rain. The first ferry of the day steamed towards the port. Paxton checked his watch. It docked in 15 minutes, then maybe another half hour for the lorries to disembark. Hardly any private cars. Early January wasn't the time for a jaunt to France, and the hassle of travelling these days put most people off. Except for the illegals in their ragged inflatables, and there wouldn't be any of those today. Anyone stupid enough to try would be dead before they got out of French waters. There was something to be said for a storm. Paxton stashed the binoculars and stuck his hands deep in his pocket. He'd spent hours up here over the winter, monitoring the hordes of migrants with a few like-minded men. Patriots. People didn't want to hear about it, but you ask the fishermen. Or look at the piles of inflatables stacked up at Dover and Folkestone. The Kent coast had repelled invaders since Roman times, but some invasions took place by stealth. He watched the ferry power through the waves until it reached the calm waters inside the harbour wall. Time to go. He trudged back through the freezing rain to the minibus and checked his phone. A message from a number he didn't recognise. Docking now and a registration, Dutch by the look of it. He drove along the winding roads past the mighty fortification of Dover Castle, stone walls standing like iron. The lay-by was a good one, by the Whitfield Business Park, but away from the CCTV cameras, screened by scrubby trees and bushes. Lorries used to wait up here for the ferry, but since Brexit, most of the freight was routed along the M20. There were still signs, though. Bottles of urine littered the hedges, fast food wrappers tangled in the branches of the trees. People had no pride. Kent, toilet of England. What was wrong with them all? He waited. Paxton was good at waiting. He turned off the engine, couldn't afford to waste petrol, even if the cab was freezing. An hour later, with the sky lightening as far as it was going to, a truck turned off the roundabout. A big Arctic, a refrigerated unit. He checked the registration number. That was the one. The driver jumped out, baseball cap low over his eyes, and checked for cameras. He ran to the back of the truck and cut through the customs seal, shifted the bolts and flung the doors open. Paxton heard shouting in some language he didn't know, German or Dutch or whatever. A rabble of people climbed down. They looked in a bad way. Three men first, heaving tatty nylon sports bags and rucksacks stuffed with God knows what. Paxton frowned. They'd been told to bring the bare minimum. Their faces were weathered heavily lined and they wore cheap-looking leather jackets and jeans. One took out a tin of tobacco and started rolling a cigarette. No, shouted the driver, shooing them towards Paxton. You go now. Paxton stepped out and opened the back of the minibus. Come on then. This way, ladies and gents. I'm Gary. I'm taking you to the quarantine centre. All right. 